Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Maverick Server. And uh, this week we're going to talk about our network configuration. Uh, because it's important that we get everything set up right on our network so that everything uh, translates correctly. So that we have the right uh, expected network addresses going out and we have the right uh, DNS server set up. Now, if you remember from uh, the last screencast, we did set up some basic DNS, and like I said before, we will do some advanced DNS settings with that. Um, the DNS basically stands for a domain name system, and so that's where you get your domain names from. Uh, again, where you have a www.example.com, uh, its real name is a number, you know, 192.168, you know, that kind of thing. And so uh, the dom domain name system does the translation for you so that it can put uh, numbers into things that we can remember a lot easier, and that's our, our normal addresses. And so we're going uh, we're gonna to talk about uh, setting that up uh, today so that we can set up our server so that it has uh, the same... Uh, IP address so that we don't get uh, things mixed up because it's important that uh, if we reboot the server that the IP address doesn't change because uh, with DNS all of our devices uh, in our network are going to rely on that for uh, for getting the right addresses and for all the, the right lookups. So I'm going to show you how uh, to do that today. Now uh, if you haven't already, uh, haven't bought a router yet, uh, what I would recommend is buying an uh, airport uh, extreme base station uh, from Apple uh, especially if you're using uh, Maverick Server because it integrates very nicely. Uh, as you can see up here, we've got uh, the ability to integrate our uh, router right into the server software itself. And what's nice is that the server actually then manages your router, uh, takes care of all of the uh, port forwarding and things for you without even having to restart your router. So it really is a great uh, advantage over having a third-party router. Again, if this is something that you haven't done yet, you certainly can use a third-party router, and maybe you've got one for other reasons for why you'd use one. Uh, but if you haven't gotten one yet, uh, I'd, I'd recommend it, especially with Maverick Server, just because of the ease of use. Uh, to be able to manage everything from this interface does make it a lot easier. Now, what we're going to do in, uh, in this screencast, as I said, is I want to talk about how we set up this networks area right here. Now, it's important uh, that I have the same address for my server uh, every time uh, I reboot and all of that, that uh, I don't get this mixed up so that this stays the same and so that all of my systems automatically know that this is, uh, this is my server's address uh, because it's going to look to my server for uh, some of the basic DNS things inside my local network. So I want to make sure that that's the same. So let's talk about how we set that up. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, the airport utility uh, because I am using a uh, airport extreme base station. You can see I've got a couple of them right here. One's an extension. That's what the dotted line's for. And so let me just get into this and I'll show you how to set up uh, a reservation for my uh, server. And you can do this for any other device as well. So you just click uh, the button here. You want to go into edit. And we get this nice drop down. And what we're going to do is go over to network here. And I want to review a couple of things on this network uh, area here for you, just so you can understand what's going on. Uh, you'll see that my router mode is in DHCP and NAT, as you can see, instead of just D DHCP only. And you want that for uh, your router because you want to be able to handle uh, DHCP, which is basically just Dynamic Host Configuration Proto uh, Protocol. That's what that stands for. And what that means is that uh, basically the router is going to be handing out addresses uh, to all of my computers. Uh, again, these, these addresses that are in here, you know, 10.0.1.20, uh, all the way up to this number right here. Uh, my router is going to be handing out addresses to machines as they come on my network so that they have a number so that it can manage them. And that's what DHCP is for. Now your server can handle DHCP and we'll talk about that when we talk about the service uh, inside the server. Um, but for right now I'm just going to allow my router to handle that instead of the server. Uh, just in case for some reason my server goes offline uh, then that way the router can still hand out the addressing and my other devices aren't left hanging. Uh, and so it has DHCP and it has NAT, okay, which is Network Address Translation. And this is what uh, typically is referred to also as port forwarding. And so it basically allows you to have certain services uh, be accessible on the Internet uh, back and forth. And uh, in the next screencast, we're going to talk about what uh, NAT is all about and how you set that up. So basically, that's the router mode that we want is DHCP. Now, if you look down here, 
you can see we've got an area for DHCP reservations. You notice down here we also have port settings. Uh, the DHC uh, reservations re relate to this DHCP. The port settings relate to NAT. Okay, so that, that way you can tell the difference between these. These actually do relate to one another. And you'll know under the, uh, you notice under the reservations area that I've got a reservation for my server and some of my other uh, devices on the network. Now, this is important, as I said before, because uh, when I restart the server, uh, I'll, uh, it'll automatically save this address for my server. It won't give it away to the first machine that comes live, but it'll save it. And uh, that's, again, very important because I want to make sure that my server has the same address. So let me just show you how uh, you go about setting this up. So what you do is you just come in here and click uh, the plus uh, button right here. And you get this drop down where you set a description. And so you can name it whatever you want. And just for the purposes of showing you, I'm just going to do this again and say server. And so that, again, I'm, I'm, I'm making a reservation for my server itself. And whatever you call your server, you can make this name here, uh, whatever you want it to be. There's nothing fancy to it. But I'm just doing server because it's very descriptive. Now you'll notice here I can reserve by either MAC address or DHCP client ID. Now, it's a lot easier to do it by, uh, you could do it either way, but MAC address uh, is a little bit easier, and I'll show you uh, where you can find that. Uh, so we're going to do it by MAC address, and so we need to put the MAC address right in here. Now, in order to find that, what you've got to do is pull up System Preferences. And in System Preferences here, you want to go to the Network tab right here, and you're going to want to go into Advanced right down here. And when you pull up Advanced, go over to Hardware, and your MAC address is right here. And so what you want to do is basically copy this address down uh, so that you can actually put it right into, um, right into the airport utility where we have it. Okay, now I'm going to click Copy. And let me just cancel this. I'm not going to make any changes. Let me just put this, uh, go back to Show All for a second. Let me just put this down. And then what I'm going to do is just basically paste it right in here. Uh, for those of you that are wondering how I'm doing that with those little pop-up windows, uh, that's a, a plug-in application called PopClip. Uh, so anyway, so I pasted that in there, so I've got my MAC address. Now what I want to do is I set the IP address, and you'll notice right here I can do whatever I want. I can back up and I can put, uh, you know, point .3, I can do 2. Whatever it is that I want to do, I can put the address that I want to have in there that stays permanent, and then I click Save. And once I click Save, then it's going to reserve that address for me. Uh, the router is going to uh, reboot and uh, then it's going to uh, give me my reservation. Now since I've already done that, let me just click Cancel here because as you can see I've already done that and so once you've finished it will show up right here. Now what we want to do now is test to make sure that it worked. So did it do what it was supposed to do? So let me just put this down and what you'll notice, you'll check right down here under Networks, you'll see under your Ethernet ID, you'll see that yes it did work, that it is assigned to my server and I can see the information that I need right there. So I know that that DHCP reservation works. So now every time I restart my server or anything happens, even the router being restarted, it's going to assign this address to my server. So I know that that's the same. Now what I can do is check, and what I want to do is I want to show you uh, how you check this out. Uh, I can also check it inside the network panel here. And you'll notice right here under my Ethernet, you can see that my IP address is showing that the DHCP reservation that I've got. And you'll notice that uh, on here I've got the IP address, I've got my subnet mask, I've got my router, so my router's got its address uh, all set on there. You can see um, on here, notice too for the DNS server, you'll notice that I've got the IP address of my server down here. And that's important because I want, uh, I want, every, I want my server to look to itself for DNS. I don't want it to look anywhere else outside my local network, but for my local network, I want it to look for itself. Now, you'll notice that I don't only have my IP address for my server here, but I've also got two other IP addresses. And for those of you that are curious, this is uh, to OpenDNS right here, and this is Google servers. Now, I have these up here as well because this look up here is going to happen for my local network, right? It's going to look to my server for DNS. If my server doesn't have an answer for them, then they're going to go to these other servers to look up. Uh, things that it's looking for on the outside uh, world on the internet. All right, so you want to have, you know, a couple of these. It's usually, a lot of times, it ends up being your ISP's uh, numbers there. Um, but in this case, I've just added two, uh, two different ones. 
Uh, you can change these at any time if you want to. Let me just click Advanced here. If you go over to DNS, uh, you can actually put in your DNS servers here. So you can add that information in here and change this. Now, again, it's important to, to have uh, this DNS server uh, information here for my server because all my other devices are going to look to my server as well for local DNS lookups. All right. So that shows you how that works. Let me just cancel. Uh, if you wanted to, you didn't want to do it this way, you, you had all your numbers, uh, you could actually go do it using DHS. CP with manual address, and you can put in a manual address there if you want to, uh, or you can do the entire thing manually. Okay, let's just click OK. Uh, let me click uh, revert because I don't want that to be there. So if I change this to manually, then everything opens up and I can type in whatever I want for each of these different addresses. Okay, but uh, I don't need to do that because I am using my router uh, to take care of DHCP for me up front. So let me just revert and just put it back uh, exactly where it is. Okay, so that way we know it's working fine. My server's looking to, ex to itself for DNS, and so we're in good shape. Uh, so let me go show all again. Let me just pop this down. Now, let me pull up the uh, airport utility again. And what I want to show you is uh, it's important that we have all this set up, but I also want to show you on the, uh, let's see, I think it's on the Internet here, that you'll notice that right in here you want to put in uh, your uh, your server for the DNS servers right inside your airport utility. Okay, it's very important to put this in there so that that is set up properly. Uh, so that if you're using your airport utility for DHCP and all of that, you want to make sure you have this address in here. Uh, you can put in a secondary uh, DNS server as well. And so again, I put in uh, OpenDNS uh, for myself in here because I want everybody uh, on my home network to use OpenDNS and not a different DNS service. Okay. Now, by putting this in here, what that means is that all of my other devices uh, right now on the network uh, are going to look to uh, these DNS servers first. And uh, if you were to do uh, the system preferences thing on your other devices on your network, you would see that what I have on the network utility for my server is filled into their DNS servers because they're connected to my network. Okay, so that's uh, that's a very important part of just making sure that this is there because other services will rely on this. So you want to make sure that you have that set up. All right, let me just cancel this and uh, put this down and come back into our server here. So that gives you an idea of how that works, uh, doing that basic uh, DHCP reservation and just a little bit on how uh, some of these network settings work. Uh, what I am going to do is I will cover uh, in more detail port forwarding. So I'll do the NAT part uh, of what uh, we talked about earlier and show you how the server itself will manage your uh, Airport Extreme base station. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.